Jeff Gibbons here with another video, and in this one I'm going to go over Native Instruments' newest Play Series instrument for contact called Cloud Supply. This one's just coming out today and it's made in conjunction with Snipe Young, who is a producer who's worked with a lot of famous artists. And if you do a quick YouTube search, you'll realize that this guy has chops. Like he plays everything. I think he started as a drummer and he makes all of his own sounds and he's just extremely talented. So I highly recommend checking him out. So we'll look at the patches. They are very inspiring right off the bat. And then I'm also going to get deep into the instrument and show you my favorite feature of this one, which is the sequencer. All right, so let's just look at some of these patches and see what kind of sounds we've got. So there is a patch we can see that's using the sequencer already. It's kind of a nice patch. Let's play with that. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And here we go. If I click to the main page right here, I can see we've got A and B, these two layers. That's how all of these play libraries work. And so we've basically got two different sounds or two different layers. If you play with the balance right here, you're gonna switch between these two. So let's close that and let's go find a beat to work with that. Forte Rose Kit. Okay, here we go. All right, let's load up another cloud supply sound. Let's go over to some key, some more keys. There's another sequenced patch. So I've just been messing around here with the sequencer. Got a song here that's started in a sort of eighth note triplet kind of thing. And so what I did is I switched the rate on the sequencer to eighth note triplets. And then what I've done is I've changed the steps to just 12. So one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. So we basically have four groups of three steps for our 12 steps. And so now each one of these steps is just one portion of a triplet. And then I've gone and played with the velocity a little bit so the velocity isn't triggering the whole time. And then I went and changed the pitches. I can set my key to C minor. And so now I've got these intervals. So this first pitch is at the root. This next pitch is at um, an octave. So it goes an octave below. The problem is if I switch now to the sixth chord or A flat, if it were to do the minor third up there, it would go. So if it were to stick to the same pattern, if I played any other note, it wouldn't be in the key of C minor. And the coolest part about this is if I set this to C minor, now wherever I play on the keyboard, it's gonna round up the pitch to a note in C minor. So I could start right here, go to this one, go to the next one. Watch what happens if I play a note completely outside of the key of C minor doesn't matter. If I turn off the scale quantizing thing here, now we're in a totally different key. 
So if this doesn't make sense to you, just trust me that if you set this to the key that you're in, now you can play with your sequencer, you can mess around with notes, and now you can play any note on the keyboard, and it will push those values to the closest value in the key that you're in. So if you're not a musician, this actually really is going to be very cool for you because you can make these neat patterns, play any notes and have it change and have it stick to the key that you're in. Almost every other sequencer out there on synthesizers doesn't do this. So my favorite feature right there. So those are the, some of the things I was playing with. The rate, the root key, the amount of steps, and then the gate. And this is how short or long the note is. So let's try putting that in the song. And that's it. You're definitely going to want to make sure you quantize this one 100% because Otherwise, your rhythm's just going to be a little bit off with the, the sequencer will be a little bit off with the beat. Let's go to uh, key splits and see what we've got there. We've got red and then blue. Try another key split. Let's check out some of the lead sounds here. Nice. Ooh, that's really nice. So let's try these leads down in the bottom as a bass. Now let's load up one more sound. We've already got some plucky sounds in there, but we'll try a couple more in there. I like that. Let's crank up the delay. And now let's go look at the effects for a second. We've got six different effect slots that you can load up. We've got some EQ at the beginning. And so you just click on each effect that you want to mess around with and you'll see the controls for it underneath. You can turn it on or off with the little power button. Okay, so right now it's replica that's giving us our sort of ping pong delay. And if I change the time on this, I'm gonna set it to eighth triplets as well. Let's check out this lo-fi one. So that's what's giving us our source of noise. I'm gonna turn it off. long. Cool, let's see if we can add another kit in there. We'll add another infinite escape kit. Cosma kit. So I'm just gonna drag this pattern by option dragging it right over. So now I've got... But I'm gonna put in my own hi-hat pattern on this one.
Okay, so let's explore some more sounds of Cloud Supply. Let's try some of these pads. Okay, so this patch here, this pad is pretty cool. It gives me a chance to talk about some of the ways of uh, modulating information in these virtual instruments. So if you go to the main sound page here on Cloud Supply, you're going to see things like the layers over on the left hand side, A and B. And right now, if these if this lock symbol is active, any change you make to any parameter is going to be reflected on both layers. If you have this turned off and you make a change, then they will be distinct to each layer. So right now we can see transpose is different between the two layers. The way modulation works in these instruments is if you click on a parameter over here, a modulation parameter like the mod wheel, you'll see these little sliders that pop up next to some of the controls. And so what that means is if you have mod wheel clicked right here, you can now use your filter cutoff with the mod wheel by cranking this up or down. So right now this has a sound that's modulating to the left and right. And it's not going to the tempo of the song. So if I play the song, it's kind of random as far as the rate is concerned. So if I click on around, I'm going to see the most obvious one I can look for is pan because I can hear it panning left and right. So if I click through over to LFO2, you can see that pan is being adjusted by LFO2 on both of these layers. So let's just lock both of these layers for a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to LFO2 and I'm going to see what the rate is. And I'm going to turn on this music note because I want the rate to be something like that. So if I click this little music note on, so let's try quarter note. And so now we can hear that LFO thing is, that's happening, the panning left and right, is syncing to the tempo of my song. If I go and change the waveform on the LFO, this is just going to change how it's oscillating from left to right. So I could go to this oscillator right here and I could click and change, drag down to change the waveform. So we've got all sorts. There's some really bizarre ones. There's more of a pop when we're on a sawtooth triangle, but a little bit more aggressive, and we'll go back to sine wave. And this little button right here is going to re-trigger the LFO every time you press down the key, and if you have that turned off, it's just going to keep going. So it's not going to start over when you hit the note. And also if you hit fade in, it will take a while for the LFO to kick in. Every different modulation parameter is going to have slightly different things that it can modulate. So if I want the mod wheel to control the filter cutoff, that's exactly what it's set up to do right now. But it's also set to control resonance. So if I click right here and turn this and drag this down now, here we, do, we lose that kind of, that really aggressive thing that was happening with the filter just a second ago. You've also got envelopes in here, so I can play with the amplitude envelope of both of these as long as it's locked off. We've also got a modulation envelope here as well, so I could click on this and have it control things like the filter. So take the filter and move this all the way down to the bottom and then play with the attack of my envelope. Here it's closing off. So if these kind of modulation and filters and things, LFOs and things like that are new to you, then definitely go check out my video on synthesis where I talk about all these basic things, LFOs, uh, oscillators, envelopes, filters, things that you should know about if you're getting into this kind of sound design stuff. Now that we've got our, our patch sync to the tempo of the song. We could try playing along with it. Let's go load up another kit from Infinite Escape.
load another cloud supply. Check out a few more patches and then get out of here. Uh, let's look at a few more pads. We just kind of grabbed the first one there. Okay, so this one, Jimba, really nice. That uh, is some really beautiful sound. Let's go to Infinite Escape for a second and try loading up a bass synth. Let's give it a go. Let's go find a lead sound in Cloud Supply. Let's go to leads, try some of these out. Let's try another lead. So let's go to the sequencer on this one and change it to G minor. Just by turning the key on for that sequencer track, I'm getting everything in the key. So that sequencer arrangement is just working perfectly in here. If I were to turn this off again, even though my notes are in the key of C, let's see what this sounds like. It doesn't work. Sounds nasty, right? Because the sequence worked fine, say, in, on the on the note for the first chord, but then after that, everything's just in the wrong key. When you're playing with these patches, go to the sequencer, turn it to the key that you're in, and it will stay. No matter what notes you're playing, it'll stay in the key that it's supposed to be in. And if you want more information sort of under the hood of this instrument, I'll put a link to my Lo-Fi Glow video, and everything I talk about in there applies completely to this instrument. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the bell and the subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video.